Growing up and working in a metal plant, we'd always separate the scrap. And that was probably one of the early on things that influenced me in metal. So I'd, I'd be back there and they'd say, uh, you know, as a kid, separate the, the stainless steel from the galvanized steel from the aluminum. I'm like, going, well, how do, you, how do you know? How do you know the difference? They all are silver. And uh, the old guys picked them up and said, okay, feel this one. And I'd feel it and says, now feel the edge. And, and there were differences in the material from the touch. I wanted to know everything there was about the material that we were working with. In general, you know, metal is an interesting thing from my viewpoint. There's no other material available to man that can be used spend its life on a structure or as a structure, then be taken down, melted back down, recreated into something else, and have a new utility. No other material. You can't do it with stone, concrete, wood. Once they're done, they're done. You know, everything we work with and the materials we work with have the ability to be transformed into a new life at some other point in time. There's always been an interest in art, and art, the, and the artists are thinking out in, in areas that uh, they're looking at the way light interfaces with the material, they're looking at the way the tactile nature of the material. They brought things and ways of looking at it like no one else. They wanted to know about the material that, that we worked in. We want to be the experts in all the materials we work with. What we want to do is find out ways that we can relate to our architects, artists, to give them more ideas. But also, we had good craftsmen. And even in the early, early years of my career, these craftsmen were extremely good at what they did. But to be able to innovate, you know, they might be great at welding, soldering, etc., but certain things wouldn't solder as well or weld as well. Why? So we particularly wanted to drive for that knowledge to make a difference to these craftsmen. At the same time the designers were wanting to create these beautiful structures, and we would be bored to death if all we were doing were boxes. So at the one instance you had the craftsmanship, now how do we tie it with the technology? Introducing computers, we saw the ability of uh, AutoCAD and making relationships on surfaces to how things were being built. And initially, the designers used it or looked at it from the standpoint of, of conveying their drawings, making it quicker. We looked at it as controlling our fabrication, and we saw the real benefit of connecting the two. And it allowed us to do some very intricate shapes and forms that weren't available to the marketplace, uh, sort of pushing the edges, so to speak. And you know, there is a overlap of all of that. The craftsmanship, the art, the architecture, the defining dimensions of a uh, part. The computer allowed us to push areas that no one ever saw before. You know, and then still having the craftsman to produce it, the artist to give us the ideas, it's a good place to be. You know, I tell our people, you know, when, you're, when they're working on, on, on a series of projects, I said, would you, uh, would you buy a car with a scratch in it? Oh, absolutely not. What would you do? I'd take it back. I'd say, I wouldn't buy it. I said, exactly. What we are building is Ferraris. They gotta be perfect. That's, that's the, you know, the real crux of why we were around. 
You know, we're around to make dad value. But we want to we want to damn well do really, really good work. <laughs>